Hello. And right now we'll be creating a responsive sidebar with Tailwind CSS and React. We're back in our application and let's move to the components folder and create a new file called sidebar.jsx. We can run RAFCE and we are in. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this sidebar thing and we're going to cover our entire application in these React tags. This is going to be useful later when we have our toggle for our sidebar. Next, we're going to import some images. So import menu from dot dot slash assets slash menu dot SVG. And we'll do the same thing with our close dot SVG. This is a menu logo and a cross logo. This will be used for our toggle for the sidebar. Now, our sidebar is going to be positioned absolutely. Absolute pos positioning means that the sidebar does not interact with any elements on the screen. It is simply above them or below them, but it does not move them or do anything with them. This creates the overlay effect of the sidebar. We'll go into this div and add some class names. We can say bg dash black absolute. Our sidebar is going to be positioned on the right side of our screen. So we're going to say top dash zero so that the sidebar starts on the very top and right dash zero. So that's it on the right. Next, we're going to create the size. The size is going to be h dash h dash screen. So the size of the sidebar, the height of it will always be the height of the screen. And w dash 200 pixels. The width is going to be 200 pixels. This should be all for the general sidebar. We can go to app.gsx and add the sidebar over here. It doesn't matter whether we add the sidebar before or after the navbar, as the positioning of the entire component is absolute. So it does not interact with the actual navbar. Next, we can run our application, npm run dev. And I already have this link opened over here. So as you can see, now we have our sidebar. We have a contact button over here, but currently we can't see it because the navbar overlays over it. Next, we'll actually make the sidebar look good. We're going to add an H1 another h1. Next, we're going to add a div and a final h1. And we can cover this entire thing in a div of its own. Like this. Another thing we're going to do is add an image. The image is going to go outside of the main div. We can say img class name w dash 25 pixels h dash 25 pixels. Unlike most images, this image is not going to have a static source. The source is going to change depending if the nav at the sidebar has been launched or not. For this, we'll create a use state. I'm going to say use state snippet like this and create toggle. I remind you that to use these snippets, you have to go to extensions and download this extension. And we're going to set it to false. So by default, the sidebar is not going to be launched. 
in here we can say source equals toggle so if if toggle is true then the close button will be there otherwise the menu button will be there and we actually have to import use state into react for the application to work otherwise there will simply be this we've added it but as you can see we cannot see the actual image because it is most likely under the sidebar for this we can also say absolute top dash 10 right dash 5 and add a z index of 10 for example this e the z index shows the positioning of an absolute element over other elements absolute or not so currently the sidebar has a higher z index than the nav bar that's why it appears on top of it this button this image has a higher z index than both the sidebar and the nav bar that's why it appears on top of both of them we can make it bigger and as this is not a button but it is, it is meant to be a button we can say cursor dash pointer this will make the button look like this when we hover over it for buttons it's default but for images we actually have to specify it next we'll add the functionality of changing the image on click so we can say on click create a callback function and say set toggle not toggle so whenever it is clicked toggle will become the opposite of itself so if it's false it becomes true if it's true it becomes false now when we click it is working perfectly and finally we'll create the sidebar toggling we can cover our entire sidebar which is all of this in curvy brackets and we can simply say toggle and and so if toggle is true we can see this entire div if not we can't see it as you can see by default toggle is false which means we can't see the sidebar and we'll actually make this 8 instead of 10 to make it more look more in line with the contact button and on click as you can see the sidebar is toggled next we can add some text into it it really doesn't matter what text you add it's and what links you have that is entirely up to you text dash white and text dash 20 pixels you can see you can say product about we can also add a margin top of 10 and we can say contact over here as you can see now when we toggle the sidebar we have some text but it doesn't look particularly good now the positioning isn't good the size of the text isn't too good either we'll change it to 25 pixels the margin top will be at least 30 pixels maybe more we'll see now yes it very much should be more more like 50 pixels or even 70. next we'll also need a margin left so it doesn't stick to the left of the sidebar margin left dash 10. this looks much better we're not actually going to positioning it in the center if we want to position it in the center we can remove this and say text dash center but we're not going to do that now i'm just showing you that it is possible and one thing about the sidebar is it's going to have a drop down in here we can add an h1 and another div in the h1 we're going to say socials 
So once someone clicked on the socials button, we'll actually even make this a button. He will see the socials, for example, Instagram, Facebook, and others. So in here, we're going to have a few H1s saying Instagram. Simply copy this. Facebook. And finally, YouTube. Once again, it doesn't matter what you write here. It is simply a tutorial. YouTube. Like so. And we're going to add another use state. This state is going to see if the socials button has been toggled. So we can say toggle social and change this to a capital letter. Once again, it's going to be false by default. So these two use states are going to work exactly the same. They're simply going to have different names. Next, we can go to this button and say on click. Once again, create a callback function just like this one. So set toggle social to not toggle social. So the functionality is exactly the same as here. And we're simply going to cover this div in curly brackets, just like we covered the entire sidebar and say toggle social and end. We can give this a little bit of a margin left, so margin left dash two. And once we click on this, we can see everything here. When we click on socials, all of this appears. So yeah, this was the sidebar with a drop down and toggle. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe.